We're here with World Cup winning Jillaroos, Sam Hammond and Ruan Sims. Ladies, in light of the announcement today um, that Dave Smith made about you playing New Zealand um, in one of the Four Nations, before one of the Four Nations games, Australia v Samoa, what do you think of that? Um, I think it's awesome, it's very exciting, uh, something to train hard for and um, look forward to. I think it's really good that finally uh, young girls have something that they can watch and aspire to be, just like the men do with the uh, little boys do with NRL players. Well, Ruan, you've been involved in rugby league for a few years now. How nice is it to see that recognition? Oh, it's fantastic. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I've only been involved for a couple of years and uh, there's girls that have been in our team for 15 years and this is such a, a huge step uh, in recognition for them. And I don't know, I think it makes me more proud on their behalf, you know, because uh, I've come into it so fresh and new and, you know, they've been slogging away at it for such a long period of time and I think it's fantastic to see those kinds of things come to fruition and especially being down the south coast, my, you know, Sam and myself, being South Coast girls, uh, it's going to be amazing to be able to play in front of literally a home crowd for us. And Wynn Stadium is one of those stadiums that growing up down there you always want to play on. So it's an excellent venue and it's an excellent uh, situation to be in for us. We saw um, some of the Indigenous and All Stars girls get to play um, uh, during representative round, the curtain raiser for the Australia New Zealand game. Um, have you spoken to many of them and, and how great was that? Yeah, Sam and I talked that whole night. <laughs> So we were both involved in that game, uh, you know, we were so pleased with the fact that, uh, you know, we got to play on a big stage. Um, it was a little bit disappointing that um, gates actually didn't open until after we kicked off, uh, which is quite disconcerting when you're standing in the tunnel and you can hear the rope on the flagpoles banging and you can hear crickets in the stands and <laughs> it's uh, a little bit scary, you know, when you're thinking, all right, I'm trying to pump myself up for a big physical game and I'm hearing crickets in the background and, you know, so... You know, that's not something that the NRL can control, but, you know, hopefully maybe the fields can see that it's something that the public want to actually come and watch and, uh, you know, maybe next time it'll get better. Baby steps, I guess. At least we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, that's right. We are heading in a, a positive direction and um, it's taken a bit of time and like Ruan pointed out before, there is girls that have been playing for a lot longer than the both of us. Um, 15 to 20 years they've been involved and, and that's when they were playing in these big jerseys that didn't fit them and they're playing out the back of, you know, like a bolo or something. They don't get, get this, um, what we're getting right now. So yeah, little baby steps, but we are getting there. Nathan Hindmarsh mentioned earlier that it was one of the toughest um, matches of rugby league he's ever seen watching that game um, during representative round. How tough was it to be out there? Um, it was very tough and it was 24-0 but it did not feel like that. It felt a lot closer. Um, and I think, it, as he did mention, it was a tough game but a lot of our representative games and at grassroots levels are very tough and it, it's not until you come and watch or whatever chance you get, either that be on the internet or whatever, to watch our games, um, you realise how tough and how skilled we actually are and how we can play. I think a lot of people would have been shocked by um, seeing you girls on stage there performing because, yeah, you guys really are, like, getting into it just as much as what we see the guys out there doing. Yeah, yeah, we love it and we look to, well, I do personally, I watch the NRL and, you know, I just want to play just like the boys. Um, and like I said before, you know, younger girls can watch us instead of us having to watch the boys, you know. We can show them that we can play just as well. Well, Ruan, we can see how passionate you are about um, female rugby league. Where would you like to see it going in the future now? I think ultimately, uh, with any sport, you'd like to see it rise to the level of becoming a professional occupation for the participants. Um, obviously, uh, short-term goals, you just want uh, it to be uh, more accepted, you know, have a lot more support and exposure of the sport. Uh, not a lot of people would actually know that women do play rugby league and the rugby league community being as it is, I think, like Sammy said, if, if you get them to see a game, they will just, they'll absolutely love it. They'll love the passion that the girls play with. They'll love the strength, the intensity, the tenacity that they all show. And I think that they'll, it'll become a market that is most definitely uh, popular. And I just think that if we continue to support that, grow grassroots rugby, as it's been stated today, to prop up that top level, I think the sky's... It's got not even the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you like with it and uh, I think it's a really big area for growth and I think it's something that can really be taken to the next level.
Have you noticed at all a bit of a change in culture among the young women, um, you know, actually considering the fact that women can play rugby league? Absolutely. Uh, just the fact that, you know, girls may even want to play a, a body collision sport, you know, that consideration has increased with the nines, uh, with the sevens in rugby. And, uh, you know, even though rugby league and rugby union are competing for a similar base, uh, because Sevens is becoming more well known that women do play, uh, having women decide to play rugby league is becoming more accepted practice and a more commonplace practice. And uh, I think if we can work together, uh, it's just obviously it's just going to increase the collective and I think that's something we really need to look at. So um, I guess last question now, Sam, where to for um, the Gillaroos in preparation for this uh, Four Nations curtain raiser? Um, well, I just went on Facebook actually and everyone's already pumped about the news. Um, this is exactly what we needed, a little bit of extra motivation. We were on such a high last year after the World Cup and, and we stayed on that high for a while and then we thought nothing was really going to happen. So I think this is going to um, encourage a big pre preparation for us. It's going to be a big motivational tool um, and hopefully you know, we'll be going into camps in and out again just like we did with, uh, with the World Cup because there's no way we want the Kiwis to beat us now. Mm -hmm.